So I would like to give you a brief introduction to a free statistical package called Jamovi. This can be used to analyze the data that you collect from your SquirrelNet modules, including the giving up density module, as well as the behavior module. For this demonstration, I'll use the behavior data, and I'll use a clean version of that. So to get the software, you can go to jamovi.org and download it um, here. You'll see it's one, it's free and open, so it's, uh, and it's built on the um, top of the R statistical language, which is really cool. And it's an alternative to some of the costly statistical packages that your university may have access to. We have access to both SPSS and SAS here, but um, it's not an easy thing for our students to access it off campus or licenses may expire or something like that. So just getting used to um, maybe a package that doesn't have those um, limitations like Jamovi might be good to do. So I've opened up Jamovi on, on my computer, so I downloaded it. And the first thing you'll want to do is import your data into Jamovi. Um, I like to save my data as a CSV file. So you've been working in, in, in Excel. Your instructor may have given you data um, as, as an Excel sheet that they downloaded and um, then you can clean that up, or they may have cleaned that up for you already, and then um, saved it, that clean sheet as a CSV, which is uh, comma delimited. It's not all that important, but that, that works really well to bring into Jamovi. So you want to import that. You have to figure out where you put it. And so I'm not the most organized person, uh, but at least I know where my data is. Um, and so here is the cleaned CSV file. Now, one bizarro thing, and I don't really understand why it does this, uh, is it'll put it into like the fourth column. I don't know why. Um, but all I'll do is just delete some of these variables. And so just, it's like an extra step. So if that happens to you, just delete those variables. I don't even have to delete them. I'm just a little bit obsessive compulsive that way. All right, so now you've got the data in Jamovi and there's a few things you can do just to uh, play around with it, right? So um, first is, well, I'm gonna stick with, with analysis and just go to explore and the descriptives. Okay, so first thing, you're going to have as a as an individual or as a team is some type of research question and so let's just say for the sake of argument that your research question involves um, vigilance in urban habitats or on, on, on college campuses right so uh, we've collected now behavioral data uh, we looked at vigilance and foraging and alert foraging and social um, and other behaviors and you put that all into your data sheet and uploaded that to the national data set and, and now you have um, all of that data available to you and so you're interested in vigilance so let's just uh, look at vigilance and we'll put that in there and this will right away it'll say well there's 1215 data points um, in the data set that i have um, and looking at all the data you know, we've got a mean of 4.33 out of 16 um, uh, behaviors that we coded as vigilance, okay. Uh, just kind of click on the statistics box here and the plots box. Um, we can ask the question, well, is this data normally distributed, okay. And so there's a test for normality called Shapiro-Wilk, and so we can look at that. And um, the tests we're looking at, and we'll look at this again, um, a low p-value means that this data is, it, it violates the, that assumption of normality. So um, it's not normally distributed. And you can get a, um, well, a couple different graphs of this. 
you know, a normal distribution looks like a bell curve, right? And so this will give you a distribution that clearly does not look like a bell curve. And so that's something that you can use. And then another common plot is something called a QQ plot. And in a QQ plot, a normal distribution looks like a straight line. And here we've got like data that looks more, it's like sigmoidal. It looks like in the shape of an S. So one of the things that you'll want to do um, as you're doing your statistical analysis is ask this first question, um, is this data normally distributed? So you can, um, you can do that here um, with these, with these uh, both graphically and statistically with the Shapiro Wilk test. As long as we're here, we can um, split this data by habitat. Since our question is like, well, are they more vigilant in on college campuses? Um, that would be in the habitat. So we can split this by habitat and it will give us, it'll calculate um, this based on habitat. First thing we'll find is most, we've got a, about half of our observations are on college campuses. Uh, and then we have a lot on in other urban habitats, not a lot in agriculture. And so this just gives us a basic breakdown of uh, where uh, those squirrels were observed, what habitats those squirrels were observed. And here we have the means and the standard deviations. And then we also have um, some other measures, median, minimum, maximum, that you can use for descriptive statistics. Anyway, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and you can use that, but let's go over to the ANOVA. Um, and this is where we would do our statistical test. First choice we'd have to make is, are we, we going to do a parametric or non-parametric test? So we've already established that with our question, looking at vigilance, that those data are not normally distributed. So we would want to do a non-parametric ANOVA. If the data were normally distributed, we could do a, a parametric um, uh, ANOVA, right? So we're gonna, we're gonna select the Kruskal-Wallis test here. And now we're going to uh, our dependent variable. Uh, again, our question was, um, um, are squirrels more vigilant on college campuses? So we'll select that and then again, we're going to want to look at the habitat as our grouping variable. Okay. So, wow, this is so cool. I did not know this. I'm sorry, because I'm here. I am getting all kind of goofy on an actual training video, as if um, I'd seen these graphs before, and I have not. Uh, so it'll actually break down um, your data. Into, into habitat if you split it that way. So that's kind of cool. I've never seen that before. I know, sorry for being so weird on you. Uh, but if we scroll down now, um, so this is our non-parametric Kruskal-Wallis test. And we can see overall, so this is like, um, we're basically uh, saying that testing the null hypothesis that there's no difference in vigilance across all the habitats. And, and so we would reject that null and say, okay, there is a difference um, in vigilance across all the habitats, but we just don't know which ones at this point. So this is where you would do your post hoc tests normally. Um, and I don't know why I said that because we have a way to do post hoc tests in, um, um, in with these non-parametric tests. So you would click here for the, for the pairwise comparison. So these are the post hoc tests. And, and again, if, you're, if your question is fo focused on the, the differences um, in vigilance on college campuses or are squirrels more vigilant on college campuses, we're just waiting at this point and it's oh so arduous to wait, right? Um, for these um, college campus boxes to be filled in. Um, again, there's a lot of data in here. I'm just giving you a, how can I use uh, Jamovi for the statistical um, uh, tests. Okay, so now we've done three things pretty pretty easily, um, or three things that you need to know how to do. We've imported the data set into Jamovi. Um, we've looked at some of the descriptive statistics. 
we've figured out if that data is normally distributed. And then we've chosen the appropriate statistical test based on that. We now have this, the overall statistical um, test for the, the initial question, is there a difference, um, well, um, across habitats and vigilance, uh, but also the pairwise comparisons. So now we can see, for example, that college campuses and deserts are significantly different in, in, in vigilance, um, as are college campuses and other um, urban um, uh, settings um, are, are different. You would then go back to the original descriptives to see, um, uh, to look more um, at those differences. Anyway, so I hope this was a helpful tutorial on how to use Jamovi to look at your squirrel net data.